Hello friends, welcome back to my kitchen, my rules. I am so glad to see you're here with me today. And I know that some of y'all have not been seeing the recipes that I've posted. So if you are thinking, Lee Brown, where have you been? Match that little bell for notifications because the socials have their own personality. And so speaking of personality, today we're gonna make the easiest dessert ever. And that means it's a grandma recipe. You know that we make things way too complicated in today's world. And I can hear you saying, amen. Go ahead and add that to the comments if you need to let it out. We're gonna make the easiest egg custard ever. If you know anything about me or you follow my stuff, you know that my chickens are very, very, very plentiful right now and the eggs are plentiful, and I'm just looking for ways to use them up besides sell them at the little church farmer's market, which if you want to go buy some of our eggs, then you should hit me up in message and I'll tell you when my son will be there. But anyway, we're gonna make an egg custard today, and I mean old school, and I'm gonna show y'all what I mean by old school, but first of all, get you your setup right. We're doing 325 today. I know, it's not 350. You know, take a deep breath, adjust, 325 because Egg custards cook kind of like good barbecue, low and slow. And if you are not from North Carolina, don't pick a fight with me because I'll win about barbecue. And what y'all have in Texas is brisket. That ain't barbecue. Kansas City, I don't know what y'all are doing out there, but it is not right. So anyway, in addition to that, we are going to get our milk out. You can use whole. You can use 1%, 2%. I don't know why you would buy skim, but I guess some of y'all do. Oh, it looks blue. Y'all ever notice that skim milk is blue? Uh, ponder that for a second that sketch. I'm using 1% because that's what we buy from the Lowe's Foods and I need four cups of it. So we're gonna put that in a saucepan here on the stove and we're going to get it started warming up here. And if you're a Gen X or I know you just said, warm it up Lee. And I said, I'm about to warm it up Lee. That's what I was born to do. So we have four cups of whatever milk you have. And obviously the more fat that's in your milk, the better it's going to taste, but also the more calories it's going to have for those of y'all that are doing your counting. All right, so let's cut that onto a medium heat. And I just spilled a drop of milk, which means y'all know I have to wipe that up because that's a little bit of my nature to not let it set. Plus, it'll cook on the stove top and that's kind of gross. So anyway, you're going to let it heat up over here till there's bubbles at the edges. And then here's the other ingredients you're gonna need. You're gonna need a little bit of salt. You're gonna need some vanilla extract. You're gonna need some nutmeg. You could also use allspice, pumpkin pie spice, cinnamon, you know, you do you, but I'm doing nutmeg, which by the way, have that on some Briar's vanilla sometime. That's magical. And then we need six large eggs. And we're also going to need some Dixie Crystal Sugar. At some point, I'm gonna make a video and show y'all the difference in Dixie Crystals and those sketchy other brands because I'm gonna tell y'all it's entirely different. So this is my Dixie Crystal Sugar. So we're gonna go to that in a second. But while my milk is heating up, I've had some of y'all to ask me, Lee Brown, you're busy. You have your own businesses and your family and such. Why in the world did you get chickens? And so I'm gonna show y'all why I have chickens, okay? So this is grocery store eggs. You've seen them your whole life, right? I want you to look at that. Doesn't that creep you out a little bit? It's, I'm a little creeped out by the uniformity now that I know that's not good because they're good, right? They're still better than a lot of the preservative filled stuff. They're still a good source of protein, but commercial eggs look like that, all right? Let me show you what my home eggs look like. And if you want this container, I'll, I'll put the link in it because I freaking love this. It holds uh, five dozen eggs. So look at what comes out of my chickens. You see that, y'all? That is real variety, different sizes, different colors. Now, I don't have the same breed. I have over 30 chickens and they're all pretty much different breeds except for the four Golden Phoenix, which have been named the Golden Girls and Sophia, she's the sweetest one. But anyway, variety is good. And things that have variety taste better. I mean, legit, if I scramble those, you don't need salt and pepper, you don't need Texas Pete, you don't need you don't need cheese, you don't need anything. The flavor's different, okay? And so it's worth a little bit of effort. Plus, I read this book called The Doritos Effect. And if you haven't read it, I highly suggest you do because it will change some of your eating habits. And obviously I still have a lot of stuff with preservatives around the house, but spoiler alert, if you can make any changes, that's an improvement. And so anyway, that's why we're using the home eggs so much. So anyway, today's eggs, we'll need six of them. So find six large eggs. 
you're also going to figure out real quickly that your grandma's eggs probably look like this too. She probably had a variety and they weren't all uniform size. So large is obviously subjective and you may have to wiggle around with it a little bit when you figure it out. And these have been washed. Spoiler alert, if you're new to a home egg world, if they're unwashed, they can stay on the counter for a long time. If you wash them, that's when you put them in the fridge. And I will show you an example while I'm waiting on that milk to heat up. Like some of my chickens lay regular white eggs, but they're small. And so we have all these different sizes. And frankly, I think the only time size really matters is when you're doing the chemistry stuff, like bacon of cakes and things. So anyway, our milk is heating up. While our milk is heating up, we're going to get our whisk out and get some other ingredients shaken. Need about a half a teaspoon of salt thereabouts, or yay much. That's about right. That's a half a teaspoon. We need our six eggs. And if you didn't know this, news to you, you don't have to get rid of your eggshells. You can compost them in the garden. You could also give them back to your chickens because they're like a little garbage disposal. They'll eat them and it will strengthen up the future eggs that they're gonna lay. Hey. And if you're a chicken person, you're sitting there going, Lee Brown, I know all of this. And I will just say, go have a sip of something because our friends that don't do home eggs might not know and they might want to become backyard poultry farmers too. And I did wash these right before I started my camera. So those of y'all that are panicking, I've already washed them, all right? Because, you know, there's some things on the outside of the eggs we don't want in our egg custard, all right? Another perk of this being your grandma's recipe, it doesn't have a whole lot of sugar in it, y'all. The amount of sugar we put in things is pretty frightening. And I have been teaching my kids how to read labels since they were old enough to read. And they're pretty astute at it, I will tell you. We also look for soy, which is not your friend either, but that's a different episode and a different discussion. All right, so two thirds of a cup of Dixie Crystal sugar and a little bit of salt and our eggs. Now, if you want to dirty up another container, you can use a blender and puree this to make it really smooth. I personally do not feel like dirtying up another item, so I'm whisking them, although I say that and I could have used a blender container instead of a bowl and a whisk, so. All right, Lee Brown, your math is off, but hey, I'm, I'm a realtor in my day job. Math is not always my top skill. I will tell you people are my skill. So, hey, I'm so glad you're here. All right, so let's mix that up and get it smooth while our milk is heating. All right. Now you have to remember that as soon as your milk is hot, when you mix it in with your eggs, it's gonna start to cook the eggs lickety split. So that's why you wanna make sure this is blended and ready when the milk's hot because you also don't want scalded milk because that's nasty. And you can read about that actually, like Little Women, Little House on the Prairie, they talk about scalded milk. And while you're waiting on that milk, because it's slow, y'all, it is slow milk. Um, you're gonna get your nine by 13. I've got my pretty red one. You can also get a trifle dish, a pretty corning round dish. You can pick your dish, all right? So see, this is my gift to you. Pick your milk, pick your top seasoning, pick the dish, it's all good. And actually, the thing you should know about the dish is that the more shallow it is, the faster this will go, and the deeper it is, the longer it will take. So you could even, you know, figure that out, make this similar to a creme brulee. But anyway, I was telling y'all about that book, The Doritos Effect, if you are hanging with me in my circular conversation here, and it, there was a story in there about some couple and the man had wanted his wife to make chicken and dumplings that were as good as his mother had made. And she made them and made them and made them, couldn't get them right until she bought an heirloom chicken that had been raised on the farm and had been free ranged and then prepared and then fixed him his food. And he said, you finally got it the way mama did. Because if you remember, we didn't have all of this commercial stuff. Even back when I was a kid, y'all, it was just starting to get all commercialized back then. But it's just really gotten sped up. So anyway, it'll remind you that this taste is so much superior to restaurants. Frankly, you just, you don't need to eat out anymore. And it's cheaper. Although, you know, home eggs, how much you pay for them depends on who you're friends with. Spoiler alert. All right. Oh, I know what I can do while I'm waiting for my milk to heat up forever. So in addition to my pan that my custard is going in, and if you like this one, where did I find that? That is a cassowaire. I love it. It's good for serving because it makes me look and feel fancy. But I also have this big 
tray that belongs in a restaurant. Wherever you live, you have a restaurant depot or restaurant supply place. That's where you get stuff like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a half inch of water in it because you want a water bath for your custard. And by the way, if you're wondering why a water bath, it evenly distributes the heat. It keeps it from sticking and getting scalded to the pan. And for a custard, you need that evenness of texture or else your family and friends will wonder what in the world you were doing. Okay, so here's how you can tell your milk is just about ready. Can y'all see real good there? See how you have some bubbles forming around the edge and it's starting to get a skin on the top? That's how you know your milk is hot. And so now we're gonna cut the heat off and let's blend it in with our egg mixture here. Now, the most important part of this is while you're pouring, whisk. Get it moving because those eggs are cooking with every ounce of milk that's coming into the bowl. That doesn't make very good video, and I'm sorry for y'all that want me to have better video. I still have not done anything beyond my iPhone. All right, so see what's still in the pan is a little bit of skin. Don't stress out about that. You don't need it. You're fine. And I'll set that in the sink because I'll wash that here in a minute. Let's whisk that nicely. Make sure our eggs and milk are nicely mixed in. Now we're gonna add the vanilla. You need, I don't know, two teaspoons, tablespoon, whatever floats your boat. I did have some homemade that my friend Penny made for me, but I ran out, so I'm back to the, what kind do I have today? Morton and Bassett Premium Pure Extract. Don't get imitation vanilla, y'all. There's way too much of the real stuff out there and it takes care of economies in places like Madagascar. So, all right, we got that mixed in nicely. Okay, now let's pour that into our prepared dish here. Prepared being it's ready. Uh -huh. You don't have to grease your pan or anything for this. It's just in the water bath. All right. I wish y'all could smell it. It smells so good with the vanilla. All right, so now the nutmeg, we're just gonna sprinkle a wee tiny bit on the top after I take my topper off here for freshness. Although opening this means there's a opened one somewhere else. Oops. And let's just do a little sprinkle on the top here so it'll be lovely when it comes out. See, now you're just like a fancy chef on the television program. Although something tells me Gordon Ramsay would not approve of my style here, but that's all right. I'm not trying to please him. I'm trying to take care of my family. Ah, all right. So now we're gonna set the whole kit and caboodle in the oven. And again, depends on the size container you've got it in and how thick your custard is. All right, so once we set it in, we're talking 40 to 45 minutes. You basically want it to be set, so it's still a little tiny bit wiggly. And if it's wiggling, it's setting. All right, got the timer set for 40 minutes. Again, this would go together way faster if I had planned correctly and I weren't chatting with y'all. And it's gonna cook slowly and then it's amazing. So I'll see you on the other side. You know what that means, right? We're done. We're done. Let's check our wonderful custard. And the way that you can find out if it's set, can't really stick a toothpick in it like you do a cake, but you can give the rack a little bit of a jiggle. So we're gonna jiggle it and it's all set. So you can look at the middle and see that the liquid's gone and it's just wiggling. If it's not wiggling, you overcooked it and then you better eat it real fast because it ain't gonna be good for long. Ah! There's your egg custard. Trust me, it's worth it. Little tiny bit of trouble, little bit of sweetness. And hey, protein for dessert. You can't lose. And speaking of can't lose, make sure you subscribe so you can come hang out with me in my kitchen again on My Kitchen My Rules. See ya.